What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to register users for our app with Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at registering the users, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships to all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, up until now, we've been registering new users from the admin section of Django, Django's admin panel, right? In this video, we want to start to build out an actual web page where people can register themselves without having to log into the admin section like we've done earlier. So this is going to take us several videos to do because as you can see, this doesn't look great. We're going to want to make this look better. We'll do that later on. In this video, we want to get this up, make it functional, make it start to work. And that's what we're going to look at. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Django videos in this series. So let's head over to our members section and our views. So if we look back over here, we've got this form and I didn't build this form. Django built this form for me. We're going to use the Django authentication form that comes with Django. So there's several different ways you can do this. I'm just going to choose to allow Django to make this for us and then we'll tweak it later on to make it look better. So let's head back over here and up here at the top of our views.py file in our member section. A lot of the stuff we're going to be doing in this video is going to be in the member section because that's what we're doing here. We're creating a new member for our website. We're registering a member. All right, so let's come up here and let's go from Django.contrib.auth.forms. We want to import the user creation form. And notice the U, the C, and the F in user creation form are all capitalized. So, okay, that will allow us to use that little form. Django has it built for us already and we can tap into it. So looking at this, we've got a login user function. We've got a log out user function. Now let's create a register underscore user function. And we want to pass in our request as always. So let's return render. And then we want to pass in the request. And now let's pass in authenticate slash, and let's call this register underscore user dot HTML. We haven't created that yet. We will in just a second. Pass in a context dictionary and okay. So I'm calling authenticate right here because up here in our templates, we have this authenticate folder and that's where our template files are. So I'm going to right click, create a new file and let's file save as and let's call this register underscore user dot HTML. And let's open up our login page here and let's just sort of copy this whole thing. Paste it in here. Now we are going to need a button. We're not going to need this stuff. And we're not going to need this stuff. But we will need a form and a CSRF token. So we'll just sort of leave that for now. Instead of login, let's say this, let's change this to register. Something like that. Okay, so that looks good for now. So go ahead and save this. Now we need a view. Anytime we do anything with Django, it's always a three step process. We create a view, we create a template file, and then we create a URL. So let's come down to our URLs.py file. And we're going to use the URLs.py file that's in our members directory, not the one in the events and not the one in my club website, the one in members. And I'm just going to come down here and copy this guy and paste it in. But instead of log out user, this is register user. And the views is register user. And let's call this register underscore user. Okay, so that looks good. So now we've got this path, we've got this page, we've got this view, let's add this now to our nav bar. And we're going to do that back in the events section, because that's where our nav bar is. So there we go. So let's come down here. And a couple of videos ago, we did this if user authenticated, we only want somebody to be able to register if they're not logged in. If they're already logged in, it means they've already registered. We don't want them to register again. So we only want to show that link if they're not logged in. So if they're authenticated, it shows the logout link. We don't want it here. Otherwise, it shows the login link. So let's add the register link right here in this else section. I'm going to copy this guy and paste it in. But instead of login, this is going to be register underscore user. And instead of saying login, it should say register. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so let's head back over to our terminal. I'm in my C my club slash my club website directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on. 
let's go ahead and run our server, Python manage.py run server. So let's come back over to the website and let's hit reload. You notice we've got this register and login. We might combine these eventually into their own sort of little drop down, but for now we'll just leave it like this. We click register, we come to this page, there's just a submit button because we haven't actually built out this form yet. So, okay, so far so good. Now let's head back over to our code and back over to our views.py. And earlier we just pointed it to that page. Now we need to actually build out the functionality here. And there's actually quite a bit of stuff we need to do. So remember earlier, we had to determine whether a thing was logged in or not, right? And we did it like this. So I'm gonna copy that and we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna say, hey, if somebody's filled out a form, then do something. It, otherwise, just show the page so that they can fill out the form, right? So if this, now we need to designate the form that we wanna use. So I'm gonna call this form, and this is gonna be that user creation form that we imported up here, this guy right here, right? So we want to do user creation form, and now we wanna pass in request.post. So if, the user has filled out the form, we wanna pass that post in to this user creation form. So now we need to validate the form itself. So let's go if form dot is underscore valid, we wanna do something, what do we wanna do? Well, first we wanna save it, form dot save. So they filled out the form to register, hey, let's save their information, form dot save will do that. Then we need to do some stuff here. So we need to go username equals form dot cleaned underscore data, we need to clean this data and then pass in username. Then we need to go password equals form.cleaned underscore data. And we need to pass in here password one. And the reason why, if you remember back when we showed the form, there's two, there's always two password fields when you fill out a form, password one and password two. And that's to make sure you type the same thing in both ones so you don't mess up your password. When you're registering, you always have to type your password twice. Well, we're gonna clean password one, right? And that's that. So now, once we've done that, we can actually sort of log in, authenticate and log in. Once they've signed up, we wanna also sign them in at the same time. So let's go user equals authenticate. And then we wanna pass in username, set that equal to username, which is this thing, which is the form field that they're gonna fill out. You'll see that later. And also password, which is password, which is also this guy right here, right? Okay, so now we're authenticating. We also want to then log in. So let's go log in. We wanna pass in request and user. And I think we did this earlier. Yeah, right here, right? So, okay, we are authenticated, we're logged in. Now what do we wanna do? Well, let's flash up a message that says, hey, login successful or registration successful probably. So let's go messages and dot success, and we wanna pass in request, and we want the actual message to be registration successful or something, whatever. So now let's return, redirect, and then just point them to the homepage. Okay, so that was a lot of stuff. So if they didn't fill out the form, that means they want to fill out the form. So here we can go else, and the same thing, we wanna pass in this thing. Let me just copy this, but it's gonna be slightly different. We don't wanna pass in the post because they haven't filled out the post yet, right? So we just wanna pass in the form. Okay, so now we've got this form here and we've got this form here that's been filled out. We need to pass that back to the page. So we could do that here with using the context dictionary the way we always would, just like that. Okay, so that looks good. So now if we save this and head back to the website, nothing will have actually changed yet. We need to make some changes on this template file page first. So let's come back over to our register underscore user and we've already got this form action thing. We need to play around with it a little bit. We want to, the method is post, that's fine. We need to make this an action. I guess we don't have to, but it'll submit to itself by default, but we might as well be explicit. We want this to point to register underscore user, quotation marks. Okay, make sure you have your CSRF token. Gotta have that cross-site request forgery token. Now we want the form itself. And we could just go form, well, just like that for now. Okay, so there also might be an error at some point. So let's come up here and let's go P, P 
key. And let's say, let's do some if logic here. So let's go if form.errors. And we always want to end our if. Let's say there was an error with your form. And we'll play with this a little bit too. Okay, so I think that's about it. Let's head back over to the website and hit reload and see if that worked. And boom, sure enough, it works. So right off the bat, I see the submit button is all scrunched up. Let's fix that. So let's come down here to our submit button and let's put some line breaks in front of it. Save that, head back over here. Hit reload. Okay, that's a little better. Now you notice everything is scrunched up. We can, we will change that in the future, obviously. But for now, we can do a little bit of change very easily by changing this here from form to form dot as underscore p. That will add p tags to the form, right? So now, if we come back over here and hit reload, okay, it looks a little bit nicer now, but whatever. So we could play with this, like I said earlier. So, okay, let's play with messages. First, if we don't do anything, I'm going to click this, this thing pops up with a little message. That's cool. Next, let's go Bob, password Bob, password Bob. Let's try and register. When we do, there was an error with your form. That's that little error message thing we, we did earlier. And if we come down here, it will tell us usually here it is, the password is too similar, the password is too short, this password is too common. So first of all, let's make this a little better. Let's use an actual bootstrap thing here, make that look better. If we come back to our base.html file up in our events section here, and come down here, remember we have these messages, right? And when we did that, we used this bootstrap code. I'm just gonna copy this bootstrap code. So let's come back over to our register page and inside of here, let's paste that code. And instead of using P tags, let's just add this right here. Boom. Okay, so let's save this, head back over here, hit reload. So now that looks a little nicer. Okay, that's good. Uh, okay, so let's try and register here. So let's say we want a username of Bob and I'm gonna type in password. Here I'm gonna type in password. Now when I hit submit, we get another error. Why? This password is too common. So there's some error messaging going on here that's built in with Django that's really cool. And this stuff down here is kind of hard to read. We're gonna tinker with that later on, but you can see there's some functionality there that's kind of cool. So, okay, let's do a different one. Let's do a real password here. Now let's click submit. Boom, registration successful. It redirects to our homepage. Notice here it says log out. That register thing is gone. We can log out. When we do, we can log back in as Bob, and it seems to work. Very cool. One thing to note though, if we go to the admin section, uh-oh, we can't get in. Why? You're authenticated as Bob, but Bob's not a super user. Remember, we have super users and we have regular users. Bob's just a regular user, so he can't get into this admin section. We can log in as admin with a super user password, and then go to users, and we can see, yep, sure enough, Bob has been added as a user, but notice he's not a staff right? He's just a regular user. And we can come in here and we could play around. There's a first name, last name, email address, all the cool stuff. Notice if we come back to the website and go to our events and try to add an event, we can now add Bob as a manager, but he's not showing up as an attendee. So there's some stuff we got to play around with here. And this video is getting pretty long. So like I said, it's going to take several videos to get all this registration stuff sorted out. But you can see it's, you know, starting to get there at least. Uh, we're able to log in and log out, All right? If we try to register again as Bob with, you know, some other password here and click submit, oh, we get an error, a user with that username already exists. So really cool functionality involved in there and we'll play around with that and, and learn more about it in the coming videos, uh, but pretty cool. So. Moving right along, we've got our registration form up and sort of working. It doesn't look great, we'll tinker with that. But this is the first step and pretty easy to do using the built-in authentication stuff that comes with Django. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It pages $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.